This is a Squabble Studios production. Hello and welcome to Squabble, a noisy quarrel about something petty or trivial. <laughs> I'm Carter. I'm Jacob. And yeah, giggles there today. Yeah, that's because I opened this do and I didn't take a sip out of it. I just I opened the do and then I restarted the recording and it makes me feel uncomfortable. If it makes me feel uncomfortable when you life. open up a can of soda and you don't j- take a sip right afterwards. Yeah, it is a little strange to just have it open, you know. It's just like vibing <sighs> with no sips taken out of it. Yeah, that that is it's it's just not satisfying. But um, today, today, Jacob, I'm going to convince you. That you're gonna try. <laughs> I am. Mm. Time travel exists, and mm. we know a time traveler. Um, <laughs> we know, we them know personally. We know uh, not personally, but uh-huh. we know of him. Yes. Um, no, we don't. I'm sorry. You posed a question to me earlier uh, before we started recording, and I forgot yeah. what it was. I asked you if you think time is infinite. Oh yeah, that's deep. Yeah, that's hard, Which, because I think that's uh, one thing we need to, to get out of the way. If you're trying to tell me that time travel is real, and that's the argument, I think we need to know what, what you mean by time travel. Because like, I know we've made lots of jokes. I was preparing for this episode. Like, We're always time traveling. We're constantly traveling through time. Yes. Um, so are we time travelers right now? I mean, yes, but we don't get to manipulate it, right? Well, so what are you defining I, it as? I am saying I'm going to convince you that there is a man who has traveled through time um meaning he was born in in the year i believe he comes from the year 2036 and oh, he came man. back to our time or actually he came back to the 1990s and okay. that yes so okay. that that's what i'm trying to convince yeah. you okay of. um it all begins in the year 19 19- 98. Uh-huh. Um, you know who Art Bell is? Uh, no. Uh, he, he, he's an old late night radio show okay. host. I want to look at a picture. Um, co- uh, he, ha- he show- showed a host. He hosted a show. <laughs> he hosted a show he called yeah, I've seen this Coast guy. to Coast AM. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, one day in 1998, he hosted a segment in which anyone could dial in with their own stories or comments. Uh-huh. Bell received a letter from a man claiming to be from the future, which (laughs) naturally came by fax. Okay. Um, So he he was faxed a story. Not Um, by like fax, like F-A-C-T-S. It wasn't a fax. Somebody, I don't know if you know what that is, a fax machine people, but they faxed him Hmm. their comment or their story, which Hmm. was that he's a time traveler. Um, It was a very long, in-depth message. Okay. Like multiple papers of... Wow of information um but um some things that he wrote and um so yeah here's some things that um he wrote uh, that were faxed in um the guy's name was john titter titter or titor i don't know t-i-t-o-r titor. is his last i name. hardly know her i'm pretty sure it's titor <laughs> <They're hilarious. laughs> um so john uh messages um bell and says that he is a time traveler and he gives all this information about where he comes from the year um and he also uh so he, let me so let me just let me just give you some mm-hmm. some information here he explains how the time machine works how does it work he explains <laughs> how the timelines work oh, yeah. and he gives some predictions of the future oh. he also um in some forum posts afterwards he posts pictures Okay. And diagrams of his machine. Then how come we haven't been able to make it? Well, l- well, let me explain. Right. Um, so let me explain how it works. How he explains that it works. John Titter. He says. Um, Titor. Titor. John Titor. That's I, not good. Either. I think it's Titter. Um, as long as it's not John Titor. This is a quote from his uh, from his facts or his, his comment. Offshoots of certain successful fusion reactor research allows scientists at CERN to produce the world's first contained singularity engine. 
The basic design involves rotating singularities inside a magnetic field. By altering the speed and direction of rotation, you can travel both forward and backward in time. To get to your original line, you must travel a split second further back and immediately throw the engine into forward without turning it off. That <laughs> sounds like something they'd make up for, like, Avengers. <laughs> That's not real. No, it... The, it, it was very, very in-depth information about how, uh -huh. how the machine worked. So um, far, it sounds like here's some pictures. Generation. This is a diagram of of what it was. Um, the, the, it doesn't really have like what these um, pieces are that these points are uh, that it's pointing to. But people have speculated a lot. Of, there's a lot of speculation. Like this seems to obviously be some sort of cooling um, mechanic. Uh, Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, he also gives some information about it that, um, like, it weighs 500 pounds. Um, he can't easily move it, so he can pretty much usually uh, goes to a spot to travel, and he's always traveling to and from the same spot, um, things like that. Um, here is actually a patent of from the United <laughs> States of kind of uh, what it was, a one-page patent. Um, it's kind of complicated, but that, that's that. Um, okay. There's some. Uh, there's a lot more information that I'm not, uh, that Let's I kind of have to skip over. Uh, April 2006. Okay. Um, there's a lot. There's a lot of information that I'm kind of having to skip over because, like this guy John Titter was uh, in the military. Um, oh. And um, like, was he actually, or he claimed to be? That this is what he says. Okay. Uh, I believe it though. I believe it. <laughs> um, and then he explains a little bit how the timelines work. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, first, do you have any questions? Let me, because uh, this is a, <laughs> there's a lot of information here, and it's really hard for me to uh, just give it to you all straight. Um, so, I don't have any questions so far. I have some concerns and doubts, but I would such not as say why are you just taking his word for it? Why did he Why did he go so far as to show the blueprints but not explain what they were? Well, because I, I'll, I'll get to that. Okay. Actually. Um, well, yeah, I'll get. Let me explain. Well, I'll get to that right now. Actually, um, first mm -hmm. of all. Um, he says a little bit about how he talks about a little bit about how he doesn't um well the the question i guess what you're getting at is why can't we prove that he's a time traveler and why doesn't he care that people know and if there's more than one time traveler because he says there are yeah, how come how come that they don't say that they're time travelers and how come we don't believe it and whatnot well let me scroll here um he, he, this is what he says because he talks about this as well in a forum post because after the show, after a long message on the show, he goes and he posts on various forums. People ask him questions. He basically blows up as this famous guy who mm -hmm. is a time traveler because his stuff was so in-depth and, and yeah. seemingly accurate to what you, know, you might think. Well, this is what he says when somebody asks him, how come you know, we don't see a bunch of time travelers and how come you don't care if anybody believes you and whatnot? He says, a while ago, uh, I related an experience I had with my parents while we were driving down a highway. In Every a now and car. then... <laughs> uh, maybe not a flying car. He says driving. Every now and then, we would pass someone who was in obvious who was in obvious distress with their vehicle. I was amazed that so many people could pass them by without stopping to help. Their explanation was fear. The risk of helping someone was too great, and with today's technology, they probably had a cell phone anyway. If they didn't, the walk to a gas station would be good for them and teach them a lesson for running out of gas. This is a little uh, analogy, I guess. Okay. You know what? Do you get what he's saying, basically? So he's saying that. Wait, is he trying to imply that time travelers don't time travel because they're scared of getting stranded? No, he's saying that time travelers do time travel, but like, if he's time traveling to this year and he knows like that all this stuff's gonna like happen, why doesn't he like try to tell us that like or warn us or or why doesn't he try to prove that he's a time traveler? It's almost as if like. Let me just go on and read and keep continuing. Okay. It kind of explains more. He says, and the other example is the plight of the homeless. When you pass them as individuals on the street, I see the way people selectively choose an alternate path to avoid them. Those two examples best define why time travelers do not really show themselves. In trying to help you, we put ourselves at great risk, and there's usually no point to it. We know the nature of time dictates that traveling between exact world lines is impossible. Therefore, the only result we will see will be the ones we stay to see. Since world lines outcome the events are infinite, we have better things to do. When I arrive in the new 1998 world line on my way home, I could easily start all of this again and continue to go through the same conversations with the same people. However, I already know you won't pay any attention or believe me because we've already been through it on this world line. Besides, I think the walk to the gas station will do you some good. 
So basically mm -hmm. he's saying, I could come to this, this timeline, right? I could travel back in time and explain to you that I'm a time traveler and get people to believe me. But then when I go back to my timeline, what's the point? I yeah. don't live in this timeline. So why would I want to explain to people that I'm a time traveler? You know what I'm saying? I guess that Why would sense. I go back in time to try to help these people if that's just a timeline that I'm not even living in and I could go to a separate timeline with the exact same people and say the exact same thing over okay, and over and over? You want to hear my argument for why I don't think it's... Like, like one that I just... Okay, so if you're saying that if in this guy's world, right, that in this guy, whatever year he says he's from, 2030 something? Uh, 2034, only, I believe. That's is only 10, you... like, what, 14 years from now? So not even that far from now. Wouldn't there, if it's a, basically a pretty normal thing that there are a lot of time travelers, don't you think that one would come with some sort of actual proof? I mean, sure, that guy seems like a pretty chill okay, dude, but, why? but you don't think there's one guy that's like, I can go back to blow these people's minds. Okay, well, okay, so he, let me tell you this then. Uh, so let me explain how he thinks that the timelines work or how he says the timelines work and then maybe this will help you understand he says time itself can be understood in terms of connected lines when you go back in time you travel to your original timeline when you turn your singularity engine off a new timeline is created mm. due to the fact that you and your time machine are now there in other words a new universe is created Unfortunately, it was also discovered that anyone going forward in time from my 2036 hit a brick wall in the year 2564. Uh, we'll get to that. The world? We'll get to that later, but going back up here. So when he goes back, so let's say he's from 2036. He wants to come back and warn us. He wants to get on our show and warn us or like tell us that he's a time traveler, mm -hmm. right? So he comes back in time. He's now in the year 2020. He turns off his machine. Boom! A new timeline, a new universe. So is he's created. he's got the uh, like the Avengers Endgame explanation of each of each time you time travel, you're creating a new timeline. I guess like yeah. it's not really the same one. And so why would he why would he want to convince us that he's a time traveler if th there is an infinite amount of universes where we don't believe him? What's the point of him coming back to t explain to us that he's a time traveler if it doesn't matter to him? Because because people he's are about dumb to... and people. I, I, my argument is, I feel like somebody out there is hurt and sad and is like, I can go become famous off of this if I go back and tell somebody. But basically, I guess what you're trying to say, he's saying, is that if he did that, he would have to then live in that a... universe forever and not never time travel again. Because as soon as he goes back, that's just its own different universe now. Right. Mm, okay. See, see, like, I guess what you're saying is true. If let's say this guy, he wants to be famous for being a time traveler, he could come to this timeline, prove that he's a time traveler, and then live here forever and be rich and famous, whatever. But as soon as he, like, travels again and leaves, it was all for naught. It was literally for nothing because, it, because there's an infinite amount of timelines in which that so could or to could decide not decide what universe they go to then? Well, he so the, well, that's what he was saying when he wants to go to back his to his original timeline, is when he goes back to his original timeline, um, and turns his engine off or whatever. Oh, it basically puts him back at the second right before he left in the first place. Right, so he never left, and therefore he's back in his his original timeline. That's why he has to go back a second before. So if they do something in the past, it doesn't mess... Okay, well, now you're into that. They're not actually really time-traveling. <laughs> They're just traveling to a different universe. No, he just, when he time-travels, it just creates a new timeline. That's why you said line. So he is his line. Every time you like go back here, you start another line going at a slight angle. And then if he goes back over here, you start another line going at a slight angle. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So... I, okay. Let's, let's okay. get past the whole uh, line thing, because... Uh -huh. We could stay on that all. We could stay on that all day. Okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, but um, let me get to let me get some other information. Um, yes, he says that the world ends in twenty five sixty four because anybody who travels to that time or past it hits a brick wall, can't go past it, and if they do, they are in blackness, nothingness, and some don't even ever return. Is what he says in, in some of his posts. Um, mm -hmm. And so there's been several time travelers who are trying to figure out why, what the issue is, and how they can uh, prevent this. Well, um, Titter had some ideas of his own. Um, he also had some predictions, and we can get to that as well. Um, he claims that the Earth was destroyed because of nuclear warfare with foreign governments. Okay, that's believable. Um, he gives some pretty weird uh, information. He says that there will be a civil war. 
which would start with, quote, having a Waco type event every month that steadily got worse and would be, quote, pretty much at everyone's doorstep. And then he claims that overpopulation is a major cause as well. Hey, stop reading my notes. I'm sorry. Um, that's happening right now, bro. Right? Am I wrong? Yeah. Every month this year it is getting worse steadily worse. worse. Something's happening, you know what yeah, I'm the, saying? Yeah, the division between people and politics is just getting deeper and deeper. Mm-hmm. No matter what side you're on, or even right or wrong, and it's, it's getting deeper. You can't. It's argue at everyone's that. doorstep. You cannot avoid it, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. But also, that's a very and I would get. <laughs> and I would argue that this overpopulation comment has to do with the virus, more so. Maybe not overpopulation, but overpopulated. Okay, another thing. Why would he be so? <laughs> why would he be so mysterious about it, dog? If this guy was really referring to those things, why wouldn't he be like? Yeah, there's going to be a big thing. It's going to be a lot about, like, if you really knew that what would happen, if this, you're saying what is happening right now is the cause of what's going to be eventually the end of the world, why wouldn't he have been more specific in saying, like, uh, you know, just like, the like it's still well, not specific. Yes. Of course, I could say, yep, people are going to Because argue. he already had a plan. <laughs> he already had a plan. Because, well, and also, <laughs> he came back in time to test his theory about how to fix I almost just dropped the microphone <laughs> he came back in time to, to test his theory about how to fix the year 2564 so he wasn't coming back in time to just like you know give people the information so he's just he's, gonna be mysterious about it yeah he was just answering questions on a on. form you know okay Why you would can carry he, on yeah let me carry on okay <laughs> <laughs> after posting tons of in-depth information on forums and talk shows he vanished without a trace one day, he just stopped posting, stopped replying to comments, and never posted anything again. Was never heard from again. Well, Where did he go? Probably back to his original timeline. Hmm. Yeah, probably. Well, no. Well, I mean, yes, kind of. Oh. He's still here, though. He's still okay. on this timeline. Okay. And bear with me here, okay? Okay. This is when things get weird. Okay. He's still here on this timeline uh-huh. right now, and mm-hmm. he is... The forty, the forty fifth president of the United States, <laughs> Donald Trump, <laughs> Donald J. Trump, is a time traveler. Donald Trump is a time traveler. <laughs> I know, crazy. <laughs> I know you. <laughs> this sounds whack. I know, but <laughs> let me explain. <laughs> it all starts with Donald Trump's <laughs> uncle, John George Trump. Okay. Now, um, I didn't know this, and a lot of people probably don't. George, George, John George Trump was actually a very well-known scientist and inventor. Uh, he was a scientist and inventor at the Massachusetts, Massachusetts Institution of Technology. And fun fact, he actually was the one who oversaw the examination of Nikola Tesla's notes after his death. Oh, wow. Yeah. So um, here's a little facts, some little facts about Nikola. Uh-huh. Uh, in the U.S., he I think it's Nikolai. No, I think it's just... It's with an A, though. Yeah, but I think it's pronounced Nikola, Nikolai, right? I don't know. Um, I thought so as well, but that. then when I was doing research and it's always spelled with an A, I thought maybe it's Nikola, and everyone just says it is. Let's, Let's see. Let's see. Nikola Tesla. Nikola Tesla. Nikola. Nikola. Okay. So it's Nikola. Nikola. Coke, Coke Nikola. Long story sh- Anyway, um, in the U.S., he was known as a mad scientist. Okay, yeah. He Wait, was infamous... Uh, Tesla guy Tesla. or Trump? Tesla. Grandpa or whatever. Okay. Tesla. He was known as a mad scientist. Mm-hmm. And it said that his personal journals consisted of theories for free energy, anti-gravity, invisibility, and time travel. Mm. These are the same notes and journals that um, John George's Trump went over when Nikolai died. He spent three days... John Trump spent three days alone looking over the notes. Wow. And you know what he concluded? That there was nothing of importance. (laughs) That seems whack. That seems a little weird. No, it seems like maybe he read those and thought, wow, this guy's crazy. Nope, guys, this is just garbage. (laughs) Nikolai Tesla was a was a esteemed scientist and inventor. Well, he did There's one no way thing. that he went that. that he went over all of his notes and all of his journals and decided that nothing was important. There's no way. My theory, mm. he found the uh, theories of time travel and decided to try it out himself and <sighs> did. It went where? When? Well, 
he, uh, I don't know, he built the time machine and um, that's how time travel came to be. Um, and he did it by, uh, by around 2006. Oh. April 2006, when wow. the patent for the time machine was proposed to the United States. But it didn't, did it get like approved? Um, well, yeah. I mean, he at least built it. And then, <laughs> well, supposedly. And then, here, th- th- this is where it gets even crazier, okay? Um, Are you saying that Donald Trump is actually Donald Trump's uncle? No. Pretending to be Donald no, 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 Trump. No. Okay. Donald Trump did, is the one that time traveled because okay. uh, John, I mean, John Trump probably tried time traveled as well, but, you know, passed it on to his, his okay. uh, uh, almost said niece, but, uh, what do you what do you call your nephew? Ba- thank you, nephew. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, um, John Trump and his nephew Donald Trump were actually very close growing up, mm-hmm. and uh, Donald Trump references his uncle a lot in interviews. He once said, "Quote: My uncle used to tell me about nuclear before nuclear was nuclear." Seems kind of timey. <laughs> Not really. It seems like another thing Trump would say that doesn't really make sense. <laughs> John Titter. John Titter <laughs> went back in time. Became to to become to live as Donald Trump and become the president of the United States so that he could he so that he could save the world from its destruction in 25 whatever in 25 the year 25,000 2564 I was saying that Donald Trump's going to save the world He's trying <laughs> This is this is okay. what I propose <laughs> This would because cuz look look at it this would explain why Trump uh, why he has such strong anti-war policies Does he? <laughs> yes and it's been it explain why up until just recently, he's been trying so hard to bring peace to Israel and the Middle East. Maybe he which thinks he that's finally what's just did, because well, yeah, Middle East is one of the uh, you know big proponents in nuclear warfare. So that's my <laughs> that's my theory. Uh, that's it. <laughs> yeah, actually, do you have any questions? <laughs> <laughs> so many questions. Okay. So did this wait? <laughs> You know, sure, the Donald Trump is definitely a time traveler. Okay, what are your questions? It's so many. I will say, okay, I was with you in the first half until you brought Donald Trump into it. I don't see why he, literally the only real piece of evidence you had there was, was that he, his uncle might have yeah. maybe seen something about time travel. Mm-hmm. Other than that, uh, that's, there's nothing, nothing else made sense. What do you mean? Why does that not make sense? <laughs> well, your other arguments were just, look, he's, he's doing stuff that the president does. <laughs> I think any president <laughs> would be doing those things no matter who it is. <laughs> I mean, those are kind of just, you know, make But peace. his grandpa... <laughs> Yeah. His uncle? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, his uncle. So his uncle read one thing about time travel. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Well, you want to hear some other quotes about his uncle that Trump has said? I on, mean, uh, if you think it'll help your case, I think it would. Okay. He once said, um, uh, "I hate nuclear more than any." My uncle was a professor at MIT. He used to tell me about nuclear. Can I be honest with you? It's going to happen anyway, though. It's going to happen anyway. It's only a question of time. But wait, let me say that like Trump. <laughs> Can I be honest with you? It's going to happen. It's going to happen anyway. It's only a question of time. Travel. <laughs> travel. <laughs> uh huh. No, well, I don't believe in time travel anyway. So maybe John Titor, 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 whatever you say his name, I was with you then. When you said he was Donald Trump, that's when I'm out because <laughs> I don't think there's anything to back, literally nothing to back that up. Uh, is there any, like, how would we not know John Titor exists? <laughs> I don't know. There's no picture of him. He's never showed his face. He only appeared on. Um, Various, and so I'll give you a little bit more information on on Titter here. Um, he came back to originally was on a because he works for the military, right? Mm-hmm. So he actually came back to uh, on a mission, on a military mission to get a uh, a nineteen. Let me uh, find it here. Don't worry I'll Wait, about the silence. So when did Donald Trump go to the future in the first place? What if John Titor claimed that his original timeline was twenty thirty six? How did he get to be Donald Trump now? Like, as a child? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> See? There's no way that's no, 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 no. Yes, because he, like, I'm saying that Donald Trump was, like, let's say he, this happened in 1998, okay. so Donald Trump would have been, like, what, 
24 or something like that. I don't know. And then probably not accurate at all, but you know. <laughs> well, like I think I don't know how old he is. He now, was youngish. Yeah. So younger. And, yeah, and he's like this was 70s. posted in 1990, like the 2000s era. That was just Donald Trump writing all of this, explaining why he was here. So he came back in time and had just lived the rest of his life up until this point where he's now Donald Trump. I mean, he's been Donald Trump the whole time. In philosophy, there's presentism and eternalism. And I believe in presentism, which basically, I'll read what it says on Wikipedia. Philosophical presentism is the view that neither the future nor the past exists, um, which is basically what I exist because, let me see, it, it words it better than I will be able to, but basically it says that the future and the the past are just either things that affect the present. That's really what it's either things that have affected the present or things that will affect the present, but they don't exist yet. It's always just constantly the present. Like the future doesn't exist. It's just something that is going to, or the past doesn't even exist. It's just something that affected the present at one point. You're proposing that. But it was um, never actually exists. You're proposing that time is more of an idea than. Yes. Time uh, is anything. an idea. Because time doesn't exist. I mean, think about it. We. It just doesn't exist. Time? Yeah. I think I think time exists, mm -hmm. but we, uh, I guess I don't know. We've just put put names. I think this is yeah. Okay. I think this is kind of a good analogy. I think that you see time as more like a big line or like a big stick, like a big line basically, and that we are constantly basically just moving from point to point through very obviously like very quickly though. But it all exists. Like the beginning and then the end is somewhere. I think that it is more like a ball that is just constantly rolling. But you can't really go to other places like that it rolled down. It's just always just moving forward constantly. So we're always in the present. And you're in this ball because you, you can't get out. <laughs> I would more so propose the, um, I, I mean, I, I see what you're saying, but mm -hmm. I would more say, more, more so say um, uh, there's a theory, there's a idea where you're never, you're never anywhere. You're only ever halfway there. <laughs> okay, because what does that mean? <laughs> once you get to the, ha like, for example, let's say you're going to Walmart. Uh -huh. Once you get halfway to Walmart, you're halfway. Well, now there's a halfway point between you and Walmart again. So let's uh -huh. say you go another that other halfway. Mm -hmm. Well, now there's another halfway point in between you and Walmart. But so the, you're only ever getting halfway there. What about when you walk inside? There's, you're, you're well, exactly, that's the point. Mm -hmm. What if when you walk inside? You're there, right? But how come there is always a halfway point? Because even if you are, even in between you and the halfway point, there's a halfway point in between that, yeah, right? Yeah, it's like relativity. Right, so you're only ever halfway there, but somehow you get there. Hmm, <laughs> that is true. How come there's always, ha you're only, only ever, there's always a halfway point to you and the objective, but you get there anyway? I mean, I guess there technically is always still a halfway point. It's just on a very, it's on a molecular level, <laughs> you know? <laughs> no, because like, let's say, oops, my left hand is like, yep, this halfway. Yeah, so like now it's halfway, halfway. to the Mountain Dew can. Like, okay, now it's another halfway. halfway. Now it's another halfway, but like, it's there. But on a but molecular there level, be a halfway? it is halfway. <laughs> You're not touching that can of Mountain Dew. As soon as there is no halfway and the molecules are literally just inside of each other, it's an explosion. <laughs> And the atoms are just going <laughs> to go inside of each other. There's always some sense of separation. <laughs> yeah, wow. Where did this episode go? I don't know. It's kind of got deep really quickly, but it's true. Also, oh, shoot, I forgot what I was going to say. It was about time, but I forgot it, and I'm sad. Um, anyway, vote, people. <laughs> Do you think Donald <laughs> Trump is a time traveler? <laughs> um... No, <laughs> he's just not. I think so. Why not? Um, I'm still confused about it being Donald Trump. I was with you. If you had stopped at the first half, I would be. I would have changed my mind. But you ruined it. Well, I try to push it to the limit. You know. Yeah, you got to be. Admittedly, sometimes you push it over the edge. But <laughs> you did. It, when it comes to conspiracy theories, you got to push it to the limit. Yeah, it's not even a conspiracy theory if it's not absurd. Right. Hey so. guys. <laughs> Check us out on Facebook, Instagram. At um, Squabble Podcast. Yes, at Squabble Podcast. We also have a website, www.squabblepodcast.com. 
And then we have Patreon. If you think we're doing good work, if you think we're interesting or entertaining. Because you get the episodes early. You get the episodes early. You get some other cool things every once in a while, sometimes even exclusive merch. And um, we, we would love to give that to you for just a, like a dollar. You know, that's all we need. And okay. we have a tweeter. We have a tweeter now. And, and a, a TikTok. TikTok. Go follow our TikTok. It's hilarious. That's at Squabble Studios. That is at Squabble Studios. And listen to us on Spotify. Patreon.com slash Squabble Studios as well. Yes. And Spotify. And Google Play. Google Play. Anywhere, Apple Podcasts. Literally anywhere you can find podcasts. We're there. Um, we're places we didn't even know we were. We found us right uh, That actually is website. true. We, yeah. you just, you know, and somebody would... put us on there. We don't know who it was because we didn't upload it on that website. Yeah, well, they just, they just stream. Yeah, but they just stream it from our own. Crazy. You know. Anyway, the internet's wild. Yeah. And so go check it out. So is time. Check us out on it. And then until then, we'll snap you later. But are we snapping you later now? Or in the future? It's in the past because are, we're, I can we're snapping them later in the future, but to us it's the past. Oh, because you guys are seeing us in the future. I mean, yeah. us in the past. I mean, but like, we're doing it for people <laughs> in the future. We're doing it for you, who is in the future. Oh no! But yeah, that but, is crazy. Oh, okay. Well, we're gonna do it now and not get a headache over thinking that. Mm-hmm.